exercise 12.4, quadratic functions. Quadratic function is in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. When you graph a quadratic function, it will always be in the shape of a parabola. which means it will always be either a parabola opening up, which is that shape, or a parabola opening down, which is that shape. There are really four standard graphs that you should be able to look at an equation and have at least an idea of what the shape of that graph would look like if you were to look at it. So here are the four standard functions that you should have some idea of what the graphs look like. First one, a linear function, y equals mx plus b. To graph it, we need to know slope and y-intercept. A linear function, obviously, then, is a straight line. You should know a linear function when you see one. Quadratic function, notice the difference. In a linear function, x is to the first power. Quadratic function, x is to the second power. If it's a quadratic function, we know it is parabola-shaped. Third one is a circle. Notice how a circle equation differs. Now both x's are squared and y's are squared. In order to graph a circle, we need to know the center of the circle, which is at, in this case, hk. You take the opposite of what's being added or subtracted from x, opposite of what's being added or subtracted from y. That becomes the x and y coordinate. And you also need to know the radius of the circle, which is always the square root of whatever constant is over here. In this case, the square root of r squared is just r. And you know, a circle looks like that. A cubic function. Notice what makes this a cubic function is now we have an x variable that is cubed. Cubic functions, general shape, increase from left to right, get a little flat in the middle, and then increase rapidly off to the right. So those four basic graphs, you should be able to look at an equation and say, oh, I know that's a circle. Oh, I know that's a parabola. I know that's a line. I know that's a cubic function just by looking at the features of the equation. One example we're going to look at here with quadratic function, find the value of c in the equation y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Given the ordered pairs 117 and 561 and 795 are points on the graph. What we're going to do here to begin is we need to write our equations, okay? If you are given an ordered pair, remember you are being given an x and a y, that's a solution to that equation that we're given. So in this case, I can plug 17 in for y. I can plug 1 in for x. 1 squared is 1, so I just get a, plug in 1 for x there, I get b plus c. So there's one equation. I can do the same thing. By plugging in the ordered pairs, 561. Put 61 in for y. Put 5 in for x. 5 squared is 25 plus 5 times b plus c. And use the third ordered pair. Put 95 in for y. Put 7 in for x. And we're left with those three equations. Now from here. This is a situation of three equations, three unknowns. To solve three equations, three unknowns, you have to use substitution or elimination. And you're going to follow a lot of the same procedures that we do for two equations, two unknowns. The first thing that we want to do is get it to a situation where we have only two equations and only two variables that we don't know. So what I want to do is I want to eliminate a variable here. If you look at these three equations, C's are the easiest ones to eliminate. So if I take this top equation and multiply it by negative 1, I get negative 17 equals negative a minus b minus c. Second equation I'm going to leave alone. And add them up. Negative 17 plus 61 is 44. Negative a plus 25a is 24a. Negative b plus 5b is 4b. The c's drop out, which is what we wanted. Looking at this equation to make the numbers a little bit simpler, 
are smaller and easier to work with, divide everything by 4. We're left with 11 equals 6a plus b. There's one equation now in terms of only a and b. We want to get a second equation now in only terms of a and b, and then we can use that to solve by substitution or elimination. I'm going to use this top equation again after we multiplied it by negative 1, but now I'm going to combine it with the third equation, 95 equals 49a plus 7b plus c. Add those up. 78 equals 48a plus 6b. C's again drop out, which is what we wanted. From here, we can divide everything by 6. And now I have a second equation that is in terms of only a and b. If I use that equation along with the other one that I created right here, I can eliminate b's. Multiply it by negative 1. Add those up. Negative 2 equals negative 2a. B's drop out. Solve for a. a is equal to 1. Now that I know a, I can plug back in here and find b. a is 1. Solve for b by subtracting 8. b is 5. And now if I know A and B, I can plug into any one of these three that I want on the left to find C. Here's the top one. It's the easiest. 17 equals A plus B plus C. Subtract the 6 over, and C is equal to 11.